And now, Pooja Atman, Sri Swami, Jyotir Mahalanji, commences tonight's satsang with a Sanskrit peace chant. Om Purna Madha Purna Midam Purna Purna Mudachyate Purnasya Purna Madaya Purna Me Vavashishyate Om Shanti 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 We begin with mystic song by Sri Swami Lalitananda played and sung by Sri Swami Umananda and Rajneesh. Our song tonight is based on a poem by Swamiji. It's called O Krishna. <coughs> <coughs> We are recording from the ashram of our revered guru, Pooja Atman Sri Swami Jyotir Mayanamji in Miami, Florida. Today is November the 21st, 2018, Wednesday evening, and tonight Swamiji will be lecturing on the Yoga Vasishta. This is series 2018, class number 91. And now Pooja Atman Sri Swami Jyotir Mayanamji. Om Brahmanandam Param Sukhadam. Kevalam jnana murtim, dvanvati hitam gaganu sadrisham, tattvam asyadi lakshyam, ekam nityam vimalam achalam, sarvadhi sahakshi bhutam, bhavati hitam trigunar rahitam, sadgurum tam namami, om. Adorations to Sadguru, who is Brahman, the giver of supreme bliss embodiment of pure consciousness, one without a second, vast as the ether, infinite, eternal, beyond the three gunas and their modifications, the supreme preceptor. Yoga Vashishtha, Utpatti Prakarna, section 118, and the topic is seven steps of wisdom, Saptagyana Bhumikas. This is a very profound topic. It gives you an entire sketch of from beginning to the end 
of spiritual movement, spiritual sadhana. And just to reiterate, seven steps. First step is known as Shubhetcha, literally meaning good wishing, aspiration, without perspiration. <laughs> as long as you don't have aspiration, you live your life with perspiration. I'm joking. <laughs> Next one is known as vicharana. Literally, reflection. You are exercising your thinking process. People have the ability to think, <laughs> but they use their ability to think to, in order to think. <laughs> you bring only sad thoughts to your mind, same thoughts that could give you a clearer understanding of who you are. What's the purpose? But thought doesn't go that direction. So the second stage is vicharana. Now thought process has come on the right direction. You're utilizing your thinking. Tanu manasi, third state. Attenuation of all the negative impressions that keep your mind in a helpless state. Mind is as if carrying a load, load from the unconscious. So that's what makes people miserable. Because <laughs> you hear good things yeah, and you agree with it. <laughs> but by the time <laughs> you go home, Big pressure takes away all all that you have learnt. So that that pressure that is caused by negative impressions and simple way, the that which causes you always to Keep your attention involved with raga and dvesha. Raga, things that your ego likes. Dvesha, things that your ego doesn't like. So you are constantly a slave of your ego. Don't realize ego is a monkey on your neck. <laughs> you have your own right to live, <laughs> not your pet. <laughs> So Tanu Manasi is that. Then comes Sattva Apatthi. Mind has become so purified that you have direct revelation. I am that. But with this revelation, certain stages develop. You enter into asam sakti, <laughs> allegorically described as a dream type. The world no longer is the reality. You come to that state of spiritual maturity. The world is not the reality. <laughs> the world is maya. So it's, it's called asam sakti. You live in the world, 
But since you know that it is not real, just like you enjoy your dream, but you know that it is a dream, then dream happenings become for you sport. That's called asam sakti. Come, you come to another state. The dream itself is not there. First you discover the dream is just a play. But now the dream has faded away. The profound absence of all that seems to trouble the soul. For normal experience, during deep sleep, that's what happens. All your troubles, all your problems, skip, move away from it. Mm -hmm. Neither you are surprised nor you are curious what happens. <laughs> the satsanga makes you open your eyes to that state when your eyes are shut, what happens. And final is called Turiya, that means absolute, transcendent, pure self, the goal realized. Having given you this just, and I have already explained the first step, Shubhacha, to reiterate, one must develop qualifications. That's called vairagya chatushtaya, dispassion, vairagya, dis discrimination, viveka, shat sampat, six, sixfold wealth, shama, serenity, dhamma, control of mind and senses, uparati, Your goal is nowhere in the world but up. <laughs> no rati, no delight in the world of this horizontal nature, of time and space. Only if you are interested to, to transcend it, go beyond uparati, because you have well understood. If you are mature enough, you don't want to go on always being a kid, playing with toys. <laughs> Next virtue is called titiksha. Titiksha means ability to be enduring, patient, with a trust, profound trust within yourself, that this is the path, truth alone triumphs and there is nothing to be doubted about. And you are essentially the truth. So no matter how things go, you are bound to attain that state. Therefore, face every situation with patience. And that would imply Ability to endure while you wait patiently, you are not free of your troubles. That's why we call wait. Wait is not, it bring, comes with a weight on your head. <laughs> but, but you understand the importance of waiting. And faith sustains, gives you relief in that waiting movement. So that's called titiksha. <laughs> and that's a great quality in every field of your life. If you want success, that type of waiting, watching, having positive view, And next is called Shraddha Faith. 
And lastly, Samadhan. Do not let your mind repeat negative thinking, negative feeling. The mind goes on repeating day by day. Rather, open your eyes. This whole world is in divine hands. Your interpretation through your nervous system is very poor interpretation. So, Samadhan means with that understanding that God is behind all, every situation, view it with a positive feeling within, and it is described in a more allegorical way, if it's too hot, <laughs> don't lose your mental positivity. <laughs> Rather, understand how much energy is being gained by the earth. <laughs> so it is a matter of rejoicing. In brief, keep cool. <laughs> no matter how things are hot. <laughs> things become too, too cold, keep warm. <laughs> and that applies to all situations, no matter whatever situation has disturbed your mind, keep cool, keep balanced un with a mind that is unwavering, it's called samadha. And, la and these, all these six go to form one group of qualities. <laughs> so vivek, vairagya, shat, sampat. The fourth, intense aspiration for self-realization. Mumukshutva. If you are developing these, if you have developed them, then you don't have to study yoga Vashishta. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have started developing these, then you are you are qualified aspirant. Mm -hmm. Have a sincere understanding of these points, and you have you follow this no long, no, no matter how long it takes. But once you have understood it the importance of these, you are qualified for all Vedanta talks. <laughs> now, so this is called fourfold qualities to describe one who deserves to pursue the path that leads to liberation. Now another set of four describes sadhana, what type of practice you do in order to have vivek, vairagya, satsampa, what type of practice. That's called Shravana Chatushtaya. It's beginning with Shravan, listening. Listening, Shravan, Manan. As you listen, you try to assimilate it, understand it. And when you underst understood it, now digest it. <laughs> Nididhyasan. Shavad manan nididhyasan. 
listening, reflection, these Jasanis translators, meditation. <laughs> and then, as meditative movement advances, layers and layers of illusions move away. So you are now moving into a process of revelation. That's called Sakshaktar. Shavan, Manan, Nididhyasan, Sakshaktar. Four aspects of spiritual sadhana. So four qualities to define your ability to are being capable of following the spiritual path. And four, the practices that you do in order to progress. But all this is described in the beginning, but they are in the stage of being practiced, not in the stage of you have understood them and you have become, you have, and now you are asking for already those four, but what's the fifth? <laughs> <laughs> now those, those four qualities that make you deserve are to be pursued all through your journey. And the four aspects of sadhana also must pursue throughout. By the repeated practice of the study of scriptures, good association, and increasing vairagya or dispassion, an aspirant enters into the second stage known as vicharana, practice of reflection. <laughs> One may say, oh, you have been just reflecting, hold it in nothing. <laughs> but you may good go on doing that, but cannot succeed unless these points are followed. Your reflection, your mind must be guided by the scriptures. What you are really looking for and in what way. And the scriptures give you guidance. just to give you a sample, how does the scriptures give you guidance? Nine people from a village <laughs> decided to have a Thanksgiving trip. <laughs> and they were strong village people, young men. <laughs> they swam through a river and when they came out, suddenly their mind became alert. Are, are all safe? Did they all, all the nine, are they safe? <laughs> So this, they all lined up in a circle. <laughs> and each one started counting. And each one came to count only eight. So the majority view was one of them was dead, drowned. <laughs> All of them started weeping for the loss. Some started scratching their head. Some broke their nose. <laughs> Some tore their clothes. A wise man passes by and says, 
what has happened to you? He says, we were nine people. And one of our young friend, he's lost his believer. Can't find him. Then he realized what their trouble is. <laughs> Now he takes a stick, <laughs> makes them, <laughs> and he counts, <laughs> and shows that each one is the ninth. <laughs> he goes up softly hitting the every head, and says, you are the ninth. <laughs> <laughs> All the nine became so joyous. <laughs> now, what does the parable teaching you? <laughs> Everyone is in a state of sorrow. <laughs> and Upanishad tells you, <laughs> you are counting everything in this world, but forgetting about yourself, who am I? So, brings a spiritual stick. <laughs> Thou art that. <laughs> so, this type of listening enables you to To follow the spiritual path in a simple way. You grasp it. Giving the profound teaching in such a way that it can be understood, can be grasped. And in listening should be with rasa. <laughs> and all that art comes through satsanga and through scriptures. The scriptures have come through ages of experiment and experience. So why not take advantage of that? Otherwise you go on counting by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and end up saying, I am the most miserable. So Swadhyaya, this is called study of scripture, Satsanga. <coughs> satsanga allows you to make your study dynamic, more effective. And Vairagya, you go on developing this de detachment from all those habits that distract the mind and keep the mind in a low level. In this process, one becomes an adept in the practice of reflection. And this will lead to meditation on the divine self. Third step, Tanu Manasi. Tanu means attenuation. Manasi, mind. Mind that is filled with impurity, mala. Now in, by the, by, at the third stage, that, ma, that mala, impurity of the mind begins to diminish. As a result of practice of these first two stages, the impurities of the mind are gradually dissolved. The subtle impressions of attachment and hatred that distract the mind are brought into an attenuated state. Therefore, the third stage is known as Tanu Manasi, attenuation of the mind.
and that point I have touched upon several times. Attenuation of the mind should not be viewed by you as perfection. It is kind of risky state. <laughs> Suddenly you realize the whole week has passed and you have not been angry. <laughs> and then you realize there has been some strange sensation up in your spine. <laughs> you put two and two together. <laughs> Kundalini has been awakened. <laughs> you have found Brahma Gyan. Continue with satsang, I will not fall into this risk. So if you have not fallen into the risk, come to the fourth step. <laughs> when the above three stages are practiced with repeated effort, a yogi acquires intuitional vision of the self. Then the fourth stage, known as Sattva Apatthi, unfolds. In other words, now there is a revelation of the Self. As clouds are moving away, sun is shining. But this process again can be seen in degrees, gradually. But you don't have to wait until all the clouds have gone to come to the understanding the sun is the real reality. So that's what the fourth step is. You have gotten a glimpse of the revelation, who am I? I am the self. And that glimpse is perfect. It will, you can't go back. Therefore, that state is called Jivan Mukti, liberation. From, apparent, from appearance, you can't find anything special. If you have been five feet tall, <laughs> that is that, you stay the same five feet. <laughs> and if you are 75 or 80, Previously, you walked a straight, now you walk a hunch. <laughs> you are a light. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> a light and wet. Does not change <laughs> external realities. But don't be fooled. External appearance is not the sage. Sage is the spirit behind source self. Buddha may look thin, but you made the whole world Buddha. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Buddha imply it. He revealed to people who live their life in a state of ignorance. And they shouldn't do that. In other words, he inspired people to be enlightened. That's one example. That's the role of all the sages and saints. And the role of anyone who attains higher level, you automatically begin to radiate goodness for others. If any wave you were to rise in the, in the ocean, it has to take with it many other waves. So outer looks don't matter. What I'm reading to understand, generally people have strange ideas about liberation. 
and they believe in the liberation when they hear this story how some special siddhi was performed when nobody was looking, sage flew up. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> and, and then there are many stories of yogis who illustrate their God all powers, and yet they are far from enlightened. So much so in Indian scriptures, all demons had all the powers. Ravana had all the powers. Kumbhakarana had all those powers. Not only powers, they were learned as scholars. And yet, they were put in the category of demons. So, all that I am leading you to understand that do not conjecture in your mind an outer change. That one who is enlightened will be coming and the flashlight will be coming out of his eyes. Now in this fourth step, he knows Brahman and therefore he, will, he is called Brahmavit, a knower of Brahman. This vision, I am Brahman, that vision continues to unfold through the last three stages as the prarabdha of the sage continues to be exhausted until the self is absolutely released from the world process. Now, let's try to understand all this now that is being described, three more stages, they are automatic. They are not making you any better than what you are. But because now As prarabdha karma, prarabdha karma sustains your body, mind, intellect, all the functions of these are sustained by fructifying karma of the past. In the case of a sage, all karmas are destroyed, karmas that are accumulated through many lives, they burn up. Future karmas are not possible. But the karmic process that is already in progress, that must continue and it will have its own stoppage. While it is continuing, you will see different changes in his consciousness. What are those changes? In the first stage, <laughs> You see the world and world is real, but at the same time you understand it is Maya of the world. In the second stage, you come to a kind of more expert understanding, the world is passing dream. You, you don't even give the category of waking state, it's passing dream. And that's called the, that's the fifth state, known as asam sakti, literally meaning detachment. In the fifth state stage, the vision of wisdom arising out of samadhi becomes so intensified that a sage becomes free from all karmas and their involvement. 
He becomes detached from the world, even as butter is detached from milk. And this stage is called asam sakti, detachment from the world process. The world becomes like a dream. And a sage in this stage is called a Brahma with work, greater knower of Brahman. This more <laughs> detailed study which, which doesn't make any difference. But as long as you want to understand how things move after one attains enlightenment. So these are the, these are the stages. As Prabhupada Karma is wearing off, and as cloud, see, cloud be, came, comes to the first stage, allowing the sun to pass through. The moment that stage has come, the cloud has already come to a situation where it is going to be dissolved. There is no doubt about it. So that stage is Sattvapati. Now the cloud is becoming more silvery and sun is shining brighter. So even the people look at it and don't see a cloud. It's something silvery. <laughs> so it becomes asam sakti. And now further intensified, even that fleecy cloud is simply dissolving. You look around, what happened to those beautiful clouds? <laughs> Sun alone is. That's called Padartha Bhavana. So let me first give you, the, in the fifth state, stage, which is it becomes so intensified, sage becomes detached from the world, even as butter, etc. It's called asam sakti. The world becomes like a dream. And so, so this stage is known as Brahma with the world, greater knower of Brahman. The first stage was knower of Brahman, just knower. Second stage, greater knower. All these are just detailed descriptions, not to be confused. Don't start saying, I want to know the greater, I want to become greater. <laughs> <laughs> As this stage is further intensified, it ripens into the sixth stage of Padartha Bhavana, absence of the world process. That's what I described. You don't even see the cloud. Where has it gone? Sun is shining. <laughs> in Padartha Bhavana, and still your mind is, in a way, involved with the cloud. Where has it gone? That is the question there. <laughs> the awareness of the absence of obstruction. That awareness is still a limitation that has to move away. <clears throat> a sage experiences the state of sleep at all times. This is what the Gita describes. While well, people who do not have enlightenment, they are like those who are in the wake, awake. But while they are awake, sage is in deep sleep. And what is awakefulness for a sage? For others, they are in dark. As the world is constantly negated by the intuitional vision, the self continues to become the constant identity of the sage. A sage established in this state is called a brimhava 
ब्रह्मविद वरियान ए ग्रेटर ग्रेटर द वर्ल्ड finally a sage transcends the three states of consciousness comes to a stage you don't even think of here is the sun you don't think of it was there was a cloud and cloud had passed away all that is story goes away sun shines that then all all the details are transcended waking dream deep sleep etc he becomes free from ignorance and its effects all his karmas are burnt up even the body which was sustained by prarabdha karma fructifying karma comes to its termination the sage is called videha mukta a sage in this stage this stage is a stage of turiya transcendental now the sage is called a brahma vidvarishta the best knower of brahma the greatest knower of brahma first is knower of brahman second is greater knower of brahman third is greater greater knower of brahman <laughs> finally the best knower of brahman liberation during the fourth fifth and sixth stages is called jivan mukti it expresses through your physical personality and people communicate with the sage just like you communicate with any relative but when it comes to advanced stage that advanced stage known as videha mukti from practical point of view in that stage a sage cannot stay in his body more than 20 30 days <laughs> his karma has come to such a termination but even those last days are a source of immense inspiration for people and then again don't forget his passing away has not stopped his being the source of inspiration passing away will not matter so many sages have passed away and there their teachings continue to inspire people <coughs> cuz their teachings again are not their teachings eternal teachings now these are the <laughs> clear cut stages for the sake of presenting it to to aspirants but don't get confused the actual experience is not clear cut <laughs> you can, if you are studying in the schools and colleges you will have a clear cut <laughs> grades but in spiritual field there is no clear cut grades people like to have that there are ashrams where so they, all karma yogi is here bhakti yogi is there <laughs> those who have who opened manipur chakra go there <laughs> oh all are ashram chakra people there <laughs> that is childish everyone will have will go on growing in their own way 
And even while you are growing, you yourself will not know. A tree goes on growing. But you ask the tree about the botanical factors, the tree will fail. And while growing, again, simple point that I'm leading you to understand. <coughs> First, not to be <laughs> under distress, not to become disheartened. If you find that you are slipping back in your sorrow, in your misery. Because what you don't realize, that previously you had no way out of it. Now your sorrow and misery is putting you more and more with your japa, more and more with your scriptures. So you are not in the exactly in the same plane. Without your own understanding, you have already advanced. Another thing you will find, things that didn't trouble you before, now they are troubling you. <laughs> because you become more sensitive. Sarvam Dukkam Vivekina. <laughs> when you didn't have yoga practice, there are so many good things in the world that kept your mind quite engaged. <laughs> and, and the more expert you become in the study, nothing in the world. So why not then go to Brahma Loka? <laughs> but the scriptures are even there, no? <laughs> even all the Lokas are all they give are only straws. Saravam <laughs> Dukkam. And if you have not, do not have the real guidance, you say, what a horrible teaching. <laughs> teaching. <laughs> go, to, go to the ashram for that. There are some who abide in the first state only. So therefore, progress now, the first point, first the seven steps are not exactly seven in count. Each one has its sub-steps. And these steps also mix and blend in different proportions. So therefore, Countless people have countless stages. And of course, those who have attained the highest, they are very few in number. There are some who abide in the first state only. Others rise to the second, third, and fourth states. There are still others that pass through all the seven states during their lifetime. Each of these seven states can be further subdivided into many branches. Some yogis attain only a portion of a particular state, not full. You are practicing yama, you practice only 15%. Yogis attain only a portion of a particular state and are not fully established in it. One may possess a degree of aspiration or a degree of reflection 
or a degree of any of the other stages of knowledge. He who has conquered these seven stages is indeed the greatest of all. He has accomplished the purpose of his existence. The experience of bliss that arises in him is boundless and beyond all concepts of the mind. Being established in Brahman, a sage considers the entire universe, nay, even the world of Hiranyagarbha, the cosmic mind, as insignificant as a straw. Next section, the method of attaining the states of wisdom. Shiva Shishtha said, O Rama, suppose a golden ring were to, for were to forget about its own essence as gold. Your golden ring has forgotten that it is gold. allegorical way of saying, <laughs> you are gold. <laughs> and now, your individuality is like a golden ring. But now you are ringing with pain. <laughs> Not realizing you are the gold. <laughs> Though the world doesn't exist in reality, yet the realities of the daily life are sustained by the erroneous impressions of the mind. If you were to develop the strong impression that this is a nectar, even a poisonous substance would prove to be nectar for you. Ignorance is at the basis of all this. Remember the Gita statement, Dhyayato Vishayan Punsa. You start bringing to your mind as a wrong concept. And if your intellect is not sharp, your mind goes on entertaining. It's like I give you a simple illustration. You walk by, you see someone with a beautiful car. <coughs> First, your eyes were looked at it all around. Next day as you walked, <laughs> if I were to possess that, I would be happier. Third day, <laughs> you contact the owner of the car <laughs> and get more details. <laughs> With the passage of time, you develop that restless mind, unless I have that car. I cannot be happy. It's a very ordinary type of parable, parable that is very easy to understand. Similarly, mind follows a certain concept. And if you do not correct it by your subtle intellect, a wrong movement repeated again and again is no longer your repeat. It becomes a part of you. Think of something holding on your head, an apple. <laughs> I think of a state of mind. <laughs> you don't, apple is not there, but you're holding a headache. First stage you are just thinking, if this our mind, I will be happy. Lest next stage it is a part of you. If you are not, then you can't live. All that becomes on the basis of your thinking again and again. If that is corrected with the exercise of your sanamati, your good understanding will 
pure reasoning, then all the negative that has stored for you lot of karmas, all that can be dismantled. And with this I am going to conclude. Om Purna Madha Purna Midam Purna Purna Mudachyate Purna Sya Purna Madaya Purna Me Vava Shishyate Om Shanti Shanti Shanti